Hi there. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up and install your AutoSlide microwave motion sensors. So here we have both the hardwired microwave and we have the wireless microwave, which are available in both white or black EATS. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll be showing you how to install and connect the wireless microwave, but the process is very similar for both. So I'll start by going ahead and opening up the cover here and showing you the different components. We'll start with the hardwired version. So with the hardwired microwave, the easiest way to open up this cover is to take a little screwdriver, such as the one that comes with the auto slide kit, stick this screwdriver into the seam on the back side, just like that. And then I'll just pry it right out. And so we can see now is you have the actual sensor itself, which can be rotated both top to bottom and left to right. And then you have a little dial here. This is a potentiometer to control how sensitive the sensor is at picking up motion. And then you have both a port on the top side if you want to feed your cable along the wall or a port on the back side if you want to feed your cable into the wall. Now, the hardwired microwave sensor comes with sensor cabling to connect the sensor to a sensor input on your AutoSlide system's control panel. Now, the wireless microwave is very similar. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stick my screwdriver into the seam on the back here and just pry this thing right off. Now, the wireless microwave has a 9-volt lithium battery. And I want to make sure that this battery is connected before proceeding. Just like that. Just like the hardwired version, it comes with two different ranges of rotation. And the little potentiometer dial right here for sensitivity. But it also includes a power switch and a sensor channel switch to set this as either an inside or outside sensor or a primary versus secondary sensor. In this section of the video, I'm going to show you how to mount, install, and pair your microwave motion sensor to your autoslide system. So, I'm going to start off with my battery already connected and my cover off of the sensor, but my power switch on the sensor turned off. You'll be able to tell because the blue light on your sensor is going to be completely off even if I'm moving my hand in front of it, right? Also, we're going to make sure that our auto slide system is already on and programmed. Um, to do this, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that if I press inside sensor right here on the control panel, the door should be able to open and then close back up without any sort of issue, which it is right here. So that means that we're going to good to go ahead and proceed. So I'm going to take my sensor. And while I do have the option to use the included mounting screws right there, I'm actually going to go ahead and use double sided tape first. The reason for this is sometimes you have unforeseen factors in the environment that could have accidental triggers or dead spots where you won't actually pick up most in the area that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a temporary mounting position in the area that I think will work best. And then if it turns out I need to move that sensor, I can go ahead and just very easily take it off the wall and stick it at a different spot and see if that position and orientation works better for me. So. I'm going to take just a little bit of double-sided tape here. And I'm going to go ahead and stick my sensor up on the wall. Now, typically, for a human activation, you want to go ahead and do this above the door opening. So I'm going to go ahead and do it right about here. Let me just go ahead and stick that on. Perfect. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to angle my sensor downwards in order to pick up motion. Now, the key to remember with this sensor is that it has a conical range of detection. It is not like a straight beam that suits out of the square. It's more so like a gradually growing cone of detection area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle this downwards 
but I'm not going to angle it straight down because if I do, there's a chance that it could pick up the motion of the door itself. Instead, I'm going to angle it downwards, but just at a slight outward angle where it's looking down that way. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and flip my power switch on my sensor. And then I'm going to back out of the way here and let the sensor do its thing. So what I'm looking to see here is if the blue light on that sensor turns on or turns off. Right now I'm seeing that that blue light is actually staying solid. Now if this is the case with yours, what you can do is you can adjust your sensitivity dial right here. And what you'll probably want to do is turn this all the way to either the minimum or the maximum and see which one works better and then fine tune it from there. So for example, if I have it in that position and I back away from the sensor, the blue light will stay on. But if I go ahead and turn my dial to the other extreme, the blue light will turn off more reliably. And then it'll only turn on if I actually walk up to the door. So now that my motion sensor is correctly calibrated and mounted, I'm going to go ahead and pair my motion sensor to my auto slide system. So first, I'm going to go ahead and locate the sensor learn button on my auto slide unit, and I'll press that one time, and a red light should come on right next to it. Once you see this, activate your motion sensor, wait a couple of seconds, and activate your motion sensor again. That red light should have flashed and turned off. And now if I activate the sensor, it'll go ahead and open up my system. So now I'll take a step back and we'll let the door close. And after the door is closed, I'll go ahead and walk up to the door and the sensor will pick me up and open the door for me. Now, if you're looking to have this sensor pick up a person before they get right next to the door, you can do this by turning this sensor outward just a bit more, like so. So now if I back up, it'll close the door first. And now when I walk up to the door, it'll pick me up much earlier. The last feature that we're going to cover revolves around the sensor channel switch on our microwave sensor. Now for the hardwired microwave, which sensor input it activates at is dictated by whichever sensor input you plug your sensor cable into. But for the wireless microwave sensor, it includes a little sensor channel switch, which is the switch closest to your sensitivity dial. So if I wave my hand in front of the sensor, you'll see that I'm actually activating the outside sensor input. This means that this sensor is going to work when it's in the green mode, but it's not going to work when it's in the red mode. So if I go ahead and change my system to the red mode, which is the lockdown secure mode, it's going to close the door and then it'll lock and it will not be able to be activated by this motion sensor. But let's say that I do want this sensor to be able to unlock and open the door, even if it's in the red mode. Then what I'll do is I'll reverse this little switch. And now you'll see that it's actually activating the inside sensor input right here. This means that it is now a master activation and it'll work in both green mode and in red mode to open up the door.